So now that we've talked about the debits and credits, we're now going to talk about journal entries. And like I said before, we practice double entry accounting and every transaction that occurs does require a journal entry. But if we're going to record that journal entry, how do we record that? Well, there's a specific format that we have to use. It's a standard format for all journal entries. This format is that the first line always represents a debit and then we could have potentially multiple debits but then there's an indentation and whenever I have that indentation that represents the start of the credits and also another rule is that I always have to have an equal amount of debits and credits that always has to balance so if you take a look at this example this is just a very simple example journal entry the first time we've ever seen a journal entry eventually we're going to learn many different entries and you're going to practice doing these entries but if you look at this just in terms of formatting that's what I want you to get out of this example notice we have cash and then notice there's an indentation and then the second line utilities expense so remember the first line is always debit and then the indentation signifies a credit and notice this we have equal debits to equal credits 100 100 of course obviously if you only have two two uh, lines it's going to be the same number but that is the journal entry format and if I was presented with this particular journal entry what would it mean what would it say to me well if I looked at this journal entry I would say this this is a debit to cash for a hundred dollars and it's a credit to utilities expense for a hundred dollars debit and then credit so that's what that indentation always means then we have another example of a journal entry this one is a little bit more complicated because this one actually has more than two lines and anytime you have a journal entry with more than two lines it is a compound journal entry so if you look at this we've got cash thousand dollars then we have an indentation and we have two different credits rent revenue consulting revenue 500 500 so notice we have equal debits to credits we have a thousand dollars on the debit side we have between the two amounts a thousand dollars on the credit side so we always have to have equal debits to credits and in this case this is a one thousand dollar debit to cash a five hundred dollar credit to rent revenue and a five hundred dollar credit to consulting revenue so it's a compound entry and what this entry tells me is evidently we made a thousand dollars but we made it from two different sources of revenue half of it was because we provided rent and the other half is because we provided consulting to the client so remember we have different revenue accounts for the different types of revenue that we have so that's a good example of a compound journal entry the last thing I want to talk about in this particular lecture is something called the trial balance. At the end of every accounting period, we always prepare a trial balance. And the purpose of this trial balance is to make sure that we have equal debits and credits. We always have to have the same amount. And that ties in with what I talked about earlier with checks and balances. That's the whole point of double entry accounting, to have everything recorded in two locations so that we always have that automatic built-in system of checks and balances.